All right, all right. Here we are with another episode of the Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss podcast. I'm your hostess, as always, Leslie M. Thornton, and I'm excited about the topic today. And before I share about the topic today, just have feel the inspiration to say, I was saying to the Warrior Goddess Mastermind yesterday, one of our programs here, and about how excited I am about this three and a half week training that I'm going on this summer to being able to certify other people in hypnosis, neuro-linguistic programming, timeline therapy, and coaching. And I'm excited about this for a couple of reasons and wanting to share this with this community for a couple of reasons. So one of the things that I always talk about is how when we're on this path, right? Because so for myself, because I had a lot of potential. I'm a smart person. I was smart as a child. And like I say all the time, most of the time, the smartest people that I see are the ones that get the most stuck with food. And I have a couple of theories about why that may be. And you've probably heard me talk about that before, but regardless of that, what happens when we're not actually continuing to grow and continuing to up-level ourselves and move into that next step or chapter of personal development or growth or potential, right? And, and listening to what's possible. I've always known in the back of my mind, like I could be an absolutely excellent public speaker. I've been doing public speaking things and obviously the podcast and anyway, been doing this. And I used to be on Facebook lives for the last like 10 years, you know, being in front of camera. If I look back at my videos or audios from five years ago, it's completely different. <laughs> I was not able, I was like, anyway, right. There's been a lot of growth. And so this is my next level of growth. I've been knowing that, you know, for me to actually get judged on my way of being in front of multitudes of people, as well as getting super masterful and proficient at hypnosis, timeline therapy, neuro-linguistic programming and coaching, right. Then it's only going to, it's, it's going to just up-level everything. It's going to make me a better podcast host. It's going to show me parts of myself that I'm scared of, right? Because every time that we up-level, of course, like I'm like nervous a little bit of, but I also know that I'm always going to succeed because I've proven that to myself enough times. And anyway, looking forward to those benefits. So I know that if I stay stagnant as the leader of this community, then we won't grow that we can't impact as many people. And we really believe here at Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss that without the mental obsession to food, body, and weight, people can get present to their own potential and greatness, and they can change the world. Lots of my training is in leadership stuff, and I'm just mesmerized by that ability. It's just, anyway, consciousness, awareness, but none of us can reach our potential when 90% of the time we're constantly thinking about food, body, and weight, or at least I knew that I couldn't. It was like every time it was a distraction for me to focus on that. Cause I, my brain is so smart that it needed somewhere to go. <laughs> I needed to think about something, have some kind of project, but to be actually real with myself and be like the most inspirational project is not manipulating my body. It's not manipulating and trying to control my food all the time, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, Another thing is one of the tools that I was practicing this week is, you know, it's just so validating to see that the work that we're doing here is the most official version of being able to actually move, transform emotions and bad energy or, or negative energy based on like negative thinking, which is our topic topic for today. It removes that. And, and to just see that these tools of you know, using the imagination and using hypnosis. I'm excited <laughs> as I talk about it, that it actually just is the thing that can go from having someone feel so stuck, like no matter what I do, I can't stop going after that ice cream. And then in a matter of seconds of supporting a client to use these different tools, whether it be kind of passive hypnosis or whether it be more active somatic work in the body, imagining going back and forth and all the countless tools that we teach you here in the program, that that is actually how we shift things and that how human beings take their lives to the next level. 
if it wasn't for my commitment to constantly doing the inner work on myself, and this topic I'm going to share with you today is the latest that I have, and I'm so excited to start, and I have already been starting to teach my clients it. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be able to be here. I would still be stuck in the food, or I would still be singing my sad song about how, you know, I can't do it, or I always mess things up, or I'm making a mistake, just all these lies that we tell ourselves to try to continue to stay safe and small. But just like I was talking to a client um, this week, she knows who she is as she's listening. It's like, you're a challenger to like own the fact that probably you've been challenging yourself in different ways your whole life. And this is the one challenge that you have not yet been able to master. I want to let you know that it's not your fault. (laughs) We all can get stuck in that. It's rampant. So anyway. Can't wait to watch this community evolve as I continue to practice what I preach. Go after my dreams, do all the hard inner work, right? That's necessary and ordered. Like it's about who we become along the way that really makes the difference. And anyway, very excited about that. So special announcement over, but it also spilled right into the topic for today about being kind or being nice to yourself so much like beyond the food beyond right I have a client right now she's talking about how when she eats carbs then she can overeat carbs something that we can all relate to from the diet mentality and but when we're actually looking at what's beyond that so what's underneath that is really that inner voice that's in our head all the time, 24 seven, the same client that I was referring to a minute ago about being a challenger. It's like, she has mastered and accomplished and continue to go after all these amazing things in her life. But what's there when she's on that journey towards it is disappointment in self is never good enough is failure. And I know for myself, I had all sorts of good things happening in my life. And I have a friend right now, same thing. She's naming all these good things. She's in a great relationship. She has a fantastic job. She's healthy. Her family relationships are going well. And she's still unable to see that her life is amazing. (laughs) Now consider the fact that your life is amazing right now and exactly what you want. Does it mean that it's not hard? No. Does it mean that it's not challenging or emotional? No, of course it means that. That's what all human beings experience while they're on the way to meeting their next level potential goal. And what happens though, when we're not present to that goal, when we're not present to like what we want to have next, right? I know there's a few clients in my program that are wanting a relationship, client that's looking for her dream job client that, right, is like has these different goals in mind. And what happens as we're striving to reach those goals is we get stressed out, obviously. And because we don't know what to do with that stress, our mind just starts kind of convoluting and obsessing about food, body, and weight. And then that's the only thing that we think about 24-7. And it's actually a lie. And what I find is that it's not the carbs that are doing that, you know, overeating. It's the words that we're saying to ourselves in the back of our heads while we're eating the carbs, while we're eating the sugar. So for example, when I started this journey, obviously I had, I've talked about this all the time, the science behind the fact that sugar is addictive, carbs, blah, blah, blah. I know all the things. This is inflammatory, da, da, da. But simply because I had that label, right? Neuro-linguistic programming. It's all about the fact that words are the things that carve and program like everything that we're projecting out into reality. So if you see carbs as bad, if you see sugar as bad, right? If you see all these things as bad, then that's, then that is creating that negativity is creating a negative feeling in the body. So when it comes to, and then we feel bad about ourselves for taking those actions, So for example, it's like, I would eat that, you know, candy bar and the whole time I'm eating it, I'm going, this is bad. This is bad. I can't control myself around sugar. Sugar is addictive. Sugar is bad. 
which because I'm distracted in that negative energy, then it's like going down super fast. Like, like I'm just right. Hounding down that thing, barely conscious as it's happening because I'm here because of all the judgments and labels. And when I actually put those things aside, those negative labels and judgments aside around my food, the food has a neutrality around it. It's like, oh, if I just see this as being neutral, if I see this food as being the same as this pair of headphones that I have here, right? It's like piece of pizza, headphones. Like when you're in diet mentality, the piece of pizza is like, piece of pizza. Like it's like this sparkling, shiny, have to have it, oily, amazing. Like you can't see the headphones when the pizza is around. Literally, and if pizza isn't your thing, cookies, replace it, cocktails, you can't see it. You're blinded by it. You're blinded to it from it. So we take off those labels. We want to become super aware of like, when is my mind thinking these negative thoughts? And then once we actually are able to start replacing them with the positive thoughts, and like, oh, I, I can have that. That's just food. Then all of a sudden, it's like not this crazy town eating scenario or phenomenon. And then the second part that happens for people and used to happen for myself is then, okay, so now I just binged on something because I've been believing it's bad. Now the label, the negative label is about me. The negative label is about me. I'm a failure. I always mess this up. I am never going to be able to do this. I can't do this. What's wrong with me? And then that chain of negativity, which is adding negative feelings to my body, then usually takes me back to needing to numb out with the food again. And it just keeps happening over and over and over again, this vicious cycle. And guess what it all has in common? We've already been talking about it. That negative judgment and label you have about that food. Now, going into the specifically being kind to yourself, the impact that it has on your life to be thinking those horrible, awful, and not being nice to yourself thoughts, what's wrong with you? Why do you do that? Why are you thinking that way? Right, had a client yesterday that said, I'm my own worst critic. And the impact that has on us, it affects our relationships, right? It affects our careers. It affects definitely our satisfaction of life, right? Like that client I was talking about being a challenger. Oh, I'm still disappointed because X, Y, and Z didn't happen. But look what is happening, right? But it's not her fault. It's not anybody's fault. You can't see what you can't see. Just had a client yesterday, the same one I was just talking about. And he was saying how he's just like in awe of this work. I'm working with two male clients right now. They're both in awe of this work. They're like, but this one in particular is thinking of, he was saying like, what else am I not seeing? He was like, ever since I've started doing the hypnosis, I'm able to see that like people care about me. People love me. People want to hang out with me. Like I forgot about all my sailing friends. I forgot about all this kind of stuff. And like all of a sudden, like he was on Facebook and his whole world opened up to being able to receive this love. But because he had this negative thought that like I'm unlovable, I'm unwanted, nobody cares about me. He doesn't see it. And then the quality of his life is profoundly low. And then that feeling of lowness is what caused him to eat. Vicious cycle again and again and again and again. And so where does this come from? Oftentimes when we're children, our upbringing, we may have had other people whose mindset, our moms and our dad's mindset may have been also in a place of not good enough, or here's where you need to tweak. And in a seminar that I'm taking right now, 
what they were talking about was how actually this wasn't a seminar. This is comedy that I was listening to last night. And the guy was asking his dad, he was telling a story about how he asked his dad when he was eight or nine years old, like how life worked. And the way his dad described it was he said, we're all pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. All of us, I think it wasn't pieces. We all have a jigsaw puzzle. Like every human being has a jigsaw puzzle. But he said, the one thing that we all also have is we're all missing the box with the directions for how to put it together, or the map of what the jigsaw puzzle looks like. And so we're all doing the best we can to twist and turn each piece to try to make it happen. And without that, that map though, all that we have are the edges. So we start with the edges, same as human beings, right? And the edges can signify our family, our upbringing. It can signify our job and our hobbies and interests where the way he described the four corners of the foundation that we're building with the puzzle. And he said, and then in the middle, you're just trying to figure it all out until one day, he said, you find that center piece of what really makes you happy and it pulls it all together and makes it all work. And in this course that I'm taking, the one I was talking about before, it's great for all of us to want to better ourselves, for us to look at ourselves and say, oh, well, this could be improved or, hey, maybe I'm not so strong in, in this area of my life but not before the foundation of loving yourself, of speaking kindly to yourself, of knowing your strengths is actually built in. So if we've been growing up in a family or our upbringing was an environment where maybe mom or dad was kind of looking at, well, here's a little thing that's, that needs to be tweaked with you instead of, hey, you're awesome. Look how amazing. You're so pretty. You're so lovely. You're so fun. You're so great with other people, right? I don't know about you, but growing up in a Roman Catholic parental, right, environment, I feel like everything was just to make sure that you kept your ego down. Like it was not really something that we, that was heard of to really be praising your child and saying all these wonderful things. And rather it was kind of like, stay humble. It wasn't ever said, but it just felt like that. And then, um, you know, maybe here's the place that you can tweak. So I didn't have that foundation of you're amazing. You're great. You're this, you're that. So it helped me, supported me because like you, I imagine always going towards the next area and opportunity for growth for you. But it's exhausting and it's built on this, rocky foundation because you don't actually believe that you're the bee's knees, if you will. You don't actually believe that you're beautiful, that you're wanted, that you're worthy, that you're deserving. You don't actually believe that, not on a body level. Your conscious mind can say, yeah, I know that. I have lots of friends and family. If you're lucky enough to be able to say that, not everyone can. but your body doesn't actually believe that. And the way that shows up is in our relationships, right? We'll be in a relationship, but then maybe our behavior causes someone to kind of gravitate away from us. Cause it's like, Ooh, it's like kind of clingy or the anxiety that kicks in when you're there, right? Our closest relationships really show us what parts of ourselves are still yet to be healed. And so the opportunity of this work and the opportunity of this day and age, it's huge. I think I just, I heard a statistic last night that the rate of depression and anxiety has now surpassed car accident deaths or, or I don't know, and suicide is on the rise. Obviously there's a lot of reasons in my opinion for that, you know, people aren't doing jobs that are as physical anymore and the fall away of lots of religions and family structure, and there's just a lot of things that are out of whack. And this is the opportunity to actually create this revolution. This is what human beings need more than anything in the world right now, is to actually create new patterns in your mind of you being kind to yourself. So the way that this looks in giving this exercise is like, think of one thing that you have going on that's stressing you out something that you have to do today. 
And then what would the part of you that is kind to yourself, what would the part of you that is friends with yourself, what, is the, what would the nice part of you say about that same thing? And it's usually like, hey, you always get that done. Hey, it's okay. Like, I know that you're freaked out about that, but we always make it happen. It's like, that's what a friend would say. That's what you'd say to your friend but your subconscious is not trained to say it to yourself. So it happens when you actually start to speak kindly, when you start to actually pay attention to all the negative thoughts that you're having, both about yourself and about your food and about your body and about your weight. It's like a war path in there. Not your fault. Not your fault. It came somewhere from your past. And it can be fixed. Neuroscience shows there's neuroplasticity. We can actually pave new neural pathways in the mind that has us be a different way. So what would it be like for you if life could be a different way? Some of you are already on this path. And some of you might know what I'm talking about, but not all the way. And some of you are a full yes, that you really understand what I'm saying. And so I want to invite you to take a look at your inner dialogue. And if you don't know how, the subconscious changes through repetition and through emotion. And so this is not a job that just positive affirmations can fix. This is something that we need to do over and over again on the subconscious level until it becomes who you are on a day-to-day basis. So if you're ready to dive into that, and see how it completely transforms your relationship with yourself, your body, your weight, your food, and then ripple effects out too, right? Your work can feel, you can feel at peace at your work and your situation financially. You can feel at peace with your marriage. You can feel at peace with all the different relationships in your life. What would that be like for you? But unless you're taking action, unless you're facing those fears, unless you're actually letting other people see the cobwebs in your head that, guess what, are not unique to you. I've been doing this for a long time. Everyone's brain is saying the same exact awful crap to them on a day-to-day basis. You're ugly. I hate you. What's wrong with you? You're a failure. You always do this. You always fall short. You never finish what you start. I can't stay consistent. I can't stay motivated. I can't stop binging. I can't control myself. This is all it. This is at the foundation of what's wrong. And watch how when you actually cultivate that self-love, that self-kindness, that the food becomes a non-issue anymore. What would that be like? I know for myself, I never thought it was possible. So I want to invite you to take that action today. If you know anybody who could use our program, please, we have a referral page if you're listening to this live and ask us for the link and we can make sure that we can all do this incredible work of continuing to up-level ourselves, up-level our mindsets, up-level our lives so the world can be a better place because without that mental obsession, People like you can get present to your own potential and greatness and change the world. I love you guys and I'll see you next time.